joining our public program. And hello to the participants in Zoom from Hong Kong, Jakarta, and the other part of the world. Uh, Good School is a public learning space initiated by Jakarta-based collective uh, Ruang Rupa Serum and Grafis Suruhara. I am JJ, uh, part of Good School, part of or, or part of Serum, one of the collective in Good School. Together with us, we have Susana as my co-moderator. Thank you, JJ. Hello, everyone. I am Susanna Chong. I'm the Head of Learning and Participation and Programs Manager of Asia Art Archives. So um, thank you for all of you joining us here in person. But in fact, together with us, we have over 200 fans online who is over Zoom in, in Hong Kong, program. in Jakarta, and, and different parts of the, the world. Hello, a warm greeting Kong, from Kazakh. Um, great to world. see you all over Zoom. Uh, um, public and space for those who are new, uh, first time heard about AA uh, or unfamiliar with us, so Asia Art Archive is a not-for-profit uh, organization based in Hong Kong. So we are dedicated to document the recent art history in Asia. So we start in year 2000. For us, we actively organize different kind of programs to activate the collection. Um, also, uh, we are very excited to share the news that uh, AAA is renovating the space, and we will have a social space within the library, which will be launched in September. So these ideas link very closely to the theme of today. And and I really think that it's really great opportunity to work together with Good School, uh, together of Gotham Institute of Hong Kong. So really, uh, thanks so much, especially to Dr. Amut Maya Tulich and Alice Ho uh, from Gotham Institute of Hong Kong. Because of that, we are able to bring two Hong Kong artists, so Mei Fong and Tang Kwa Hin. Um, they run uh, oh, okay. in Hong Kong, so who will be sharing with us today. And we will have, uh, we also have Anga, Anga from Gusku uh, besides us. So, and we also have one more member, it's Farid uh, from uh, Romgupa, who will be uh, joining us over Zoom uh, as uh, Romgupa is the artistic director of Documenta 15. So um, he will be joining us over Zoom today as well. So, uh, 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 and uh, Good School are on ongoing friends. We extend the collaboration in the collective school project, which will be an uh, inaugural exhibition in Hong Kong AAA Library in September. So, AAA uh, and Good School are participating in Documenta 15, and our projects are situated in this building, which is Fredericianum, one of the oldest museums uh, in the world. And during Documenta 15, it is transformed into a school. We call it Fritz School. Uh, all partic participating artists and collectives here share the mission of education and knowledge sharing. And AAA and Good School are part of it. And it is a great pleasure to present this talk together with Good School and Gothic Institute Hong Kong. Uh, this event brings together Hong Kong based artists Mei Fong and Tang Kwa Hin with Good School and Rom Gupa. So today we will discuss the artist led model of resource sharing. Uh, we, we will focus on sharing uh, the idea of sharing space in Hong Kong and Indonesia. Um, now, may I invite uh, Dr. Amut Maya Tulich, the documenter of uh, the director of Gotham Institute Hong Kong, to send us her warm greeting from Hong Kong over yeah. Zoom. Thank you very Amut, much. please. Thank you very much, uh, Susanna, and uh, thank you, dear friends uh, in Kassel. I am really very pleased to welcome you here uh, in the Goethe Gallery in Wan Chai um, on behalf of the Goethe Institute uh, and uh, to this conversation between Documenta 15 and uh, Hong Kong. Uh, I'm very grateful to Asia Art Archive for inviting us to be part of this project because actually it's the core mission of the Goethe Institute to create networks between the cultural scenes in uh, Germany on international level and in Hong Kong. And it is also very important to us to connect uh, independent artist collectives um, uh, through 
collaborative projects and through sharing. And this is exactly the theme of Documenta 15, symbolized in the beautiful image of the lumbung of the traditional rice barn, uh, traditional Indonesian rice barn, um, just as the rice harvest is shared uh, in an Indonesian village. Um, here in Kassel, uh, art collectives from all over the world are invited to come together and to share their practices, their research, their insights, and uh, grow together through this exchange. Uh, in the history of the Documenta, um, there have been several attempts to reach far and to um, uh, include the so-called Global South uh, collectively and uh, conceptually. The previous um, Documenta edition, for example, took place uh, simultaneously in Kassel and in Athens, Greece, and in Kabul, Afghanistan. But never has there been such a radical shift uh, like in this edition uh, from the spectacular big art show to a collective global learning space, uh, becoming part of the good school uh, environment ecosystem. Uh, and uh, I think we are all very curious to hear how this looks like uh, and feels like uh, in reality in Kassel. And uh, with this, I hand over to Farid, who will introduce uh, the connection of this talk with the Documenta 15. And later on, of course, we are looking forward uh, to hear more about uh, the uh, artist collectives who are now present as guests uh, in Kassel. Over to Farid, please. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'll just like do shortly. Uh, uh, like, thank you very much for being here. It's really nice. And then in relation to Documenta, this kind of things starting by the, the our artists and then their ecosystem sharing space like Friedrichianum right now shows a lot of like uh, the directions we are taking with Lumbu. And then uh, we are not like, you know, extend, we, are, we are extending invitations to others, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, a, a, a with Good uh, Institute Hong Kong, uh, inviting more artists to be part of the conversation. So I'm looking forward to talking about space and Lumbung and sharing as a resource. Thank you very, very much. I think I'll start with that first. Yes. Thank you, Farid. Um, now, uh, let me share a bit of the overall arrangement for today. So we will have the individual presentation by the four speakers, and then uh, we will have a moderated discussion. Followed by that, we will have a Q&A session around last 30 minutes. Uh, for the Q&A session, for those who are on Zoom, please feel free to put your questions on Zoom. So my colleague Oske will summarize and bring up some of the questions here on site. So we'll, our speakers will address to that. And for those who are on site, feel free to ask your question during the Q&A session. And I also want to mention that in Hong Kong, uh, Gothard Institute side, in fact, we have an artist, Wong Ka Ying, who, adds, who is the moderator in the Hong Kong side, uh, who also will give the response during the Q&A session. So thank you, KY. Um, before we start, uh, I would like to thank all the people who have supported us behind the scene, uh, who include uh, Enda, Amy, and Hafiz uh, from Good School. And we want to thank Rebecca, Oske, Paco, and Carol from AAA, Alice and Ken from Gotham Institute Hong Kong, and Noor, Eugene, Julian, and Mati from Documenta 15. Okay, I think. Thank you so much for all these people supporting us. Now, I think we are more than hybrid model. What is this called? Trip Brit model? Um, like having the talk in three sides and more. And then, okay, let's start. Uh, so our first speaker today is Mei Fong, who's sitting beside me, who is the founder of Art and Cultural Outreach, who runs the uh, Futa Building, who found the Futa Buildings, uh, which is a vertical artist village in Hong Kong. So I hand over the time to May. Hi, hi, good uh, oh, is it? Uh, can I have the first line, Rebecca? 
Rebecca in Hong Kong because uh, they yeah so so uh, actually what before the slide appears uh, I'll try to uh, talk about artist-led uh, resource sharing one of the models oh, okay is here play the video first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, so there's a five minute video. Yeah, um, in order to, because we are talking about space, we feel that instead of looking at slides, maybe it's more interesting to watch a video. So uh, we'll prepare five minutes uh, video, then we will talk.
Uh, actually, uh, the video has just shown uh, three to four uh, residents, uh, sponsored units in Futalao. You know, the others, uh, uh, we, we didn't open up the others. All right. But just let you have a glimpse. Okay, so uh, uh, I will talk about artist lab model of research. That's one particular model for Futalao. Futalao is situated in Wanzai in Hong Kong. Okay, next slide, Rebecca. Okay, so actually Fu Dat Lao in Chinese is called, uh, the meaning in it, in these two Chinese characters, uh, Fu means full of, full of, or rich, and Dat means virtual or virtuous. And uh, I think, in a way, looking back, hindsight, it's kind of prophetic, you know, for, for these two Chinese words, uh, that, uh, that uh, in a way, uh, goes uh, with the development of the building into a vertical artist village. Next. Next picture. Okay, so uh, this particular building actually is a now is an old building now. Uh, it was born in 1968 uh, after the Hong Kong 67s uh, riot, and then uh, it's a commercial residential 14-story high building architect architectural being in the town center. And uh, initially, uh, before it turned into an artist village, uh, the lower the lower floors. Uh, were many commercial, uh, small uh, commercial uh, entities. And for the upper floor, they, are they were commercial and residential at the same time. But then at that time, uh, in, in, the last, uh, in, the last, uh, in the last century, uh, actually the building was uh, socially complicated and very, it's quite difficult for the land, uh, land uh, the, the, for, the, for, the, for the landowner to, to, uh, to manage it. Next page. Then, uh, but, 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 uh, the Fuda building actually made the major landlord is called Dawei Charitable Foundation. It owns 20 units of the 28 units of the whole building. So uh, the foundation was, is, was the major uh, uh, landlord. And uh, again, the name of the foundation also interesting. It's called Dawei Da Mei. Means it goes to the very small. It's a foundation helping uh, at that time, so you know, for, for those people who are poor or whatever, you know, socially deprived. And then next page. And then for me, uh, for me, to, for, for for me to take over, uh, it says it happened in nineteen in two thousand and two and three. The foundation uh, request made for me, that's me, uh, to help make good use of the this particular building because many of the units the. Uh, the units were vacated, but still there are some uh, small commercial uh, uh, businesses at, at, at down floor or, or on the lower lower floor. And uh, so uh, my suggestion to this foundation is that we we should charge very low rent, LOW, because in Hong Kong, space is a very precious thing. It's very difficult for artists to, to, to acquire space, you know, at the lower, at the low uh, cost and the work in it. So I think because I know many artists and uh, I think they, they are not really rich and they, uh, they need very, very uh, low rental spaces. And also another condition that I, I, I told the foundation, they should not be managed or even they are managed, they should be, there should be low manage, low level of manage because artists should be allowed to be free to do whatever they want to do. So these are the two conditions and the foundation agreed to it and so I took over the, so I tried to get all kinds of artists into the building and it started this particular vertical artist village since 2002 and three. All right. So this uh, actually for this particular stage, the beginning stage, I would term it as the first phase of uh, resource sharing for this particular building, the first phase, because for the whole 19 years, I, uh, I tried to turn it into six phases of resource sharing uh, for this particular building, within and without Futala. Next page, next slide, next slide. Okay, then in 2005, after three years of operation, uh, ECHO uh, officially formed as a charitable non-profit making organization, but it was formed virtually. No, no physical space. We, 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 you know, we just uh, run the, uh, we just uh, manage the, the building in a, in a distant manner uh, with the collaboration of the foundation. And uh, I still term this as the first stage because it's merely that we let them use the space at a very low, uh, low, uh, low rent. So it's a kind of a resource that we, 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 we give to the artists. Uh, next slide. Next slide. 
And then since 2008, uh, we echo, okay, echo uh, uh, Art and Culture Reach, fiscally move into really formed inside the building because there's one particular business unit located. So uh, we asked the foundation whether we could use it and the foundation said, you know, okay, go ahead. So we turned it into a, a bookstore, all right? And, um, and uh, the whole, all kinds of um, uh, art and culture activities that, but in, in a, uh, to a very small extent, a very low level kind of uh, activities uh, because we just at our forming stage. And uh, I would turn this as the second stage of a resource sharing model for us, second phase, all right? And uh, next page. Hello, Rebecca. Okay, now, the, um, uh, why uh, this second phase actually was important, important in the sense that uh, there is really a manager. I engage a young, a young, um, young colleague. She worked with me before, and uh, we had a lot of trust. And she was interested in helping me to run this particular space. Once there was a person there, a human being there, uh, a lot of more things can be done. You know, so, so it's very important uh, to have human beings to start the thing, the bear rolling. And uh, so she tried to open up the bookstore other than selling books. Also, you know, uh, organize small things uh, inside. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. And then it, it, it grows with time. Since 2014, uh, uh, Echo, you know, uh, move up to the 14th floor, the top floor of the building. And we expand uh, our space physically. And uh, with the expansion of the space, we also expand the staff. But still, up to now, I think it's a very small team. There are two or three full-time staff because we don't want to run programs. We, we just want to facilitate people to do things. So, uh, but uh, at this particular juncture, we try to add some uh, some more things to our portfolio. We try to promote green living because uh, we believe in green living, uh, very important to the society. And uh, I will turn this as the third phase of uh, resource sharing. And uh, and at this particular moment, because I re I retired from the uh, 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 secondary school, the school of creativity. And so I have more time, and uh, she she transferred the ownership of the, the units to Echo. So in a way, Echo has got a lot more resources. And uh, so at the time, we try to uh, become more active in encouraging and supporting alternative arts and cultural creations and activities inside and outside of Fudat Lao. It's a very important year for us. Okay. And, uh, uh, and then um, go to, uh, since 2016, getting nearer and nearer to now, uh, we also add in something else because it's only natural when we have settled down, we will try to reach out. And uh, this kind of reach out, for example, we seek a partnership to join book, uh, book fair, uh, other activities organized by outsiders. So there's a more active interaction between Fudalao, uh, Echo, and others outside. And uh, we develop a uh, Brand programs because uh, it's more in a way it's more organized. So uh, uh, I will let you know the brand programs later. And then at this particular moment, we also developing publishing cap capacity and capability because we think public publication or publishing is very important to for education purpose or for uh, art or cultural development. So that's the fourth phase. We call it the fourth phase of resource sharing uh, model for Futalao, and uh, we 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 actually. We start to sponsor people either fin um, uh, financially, small sums only, because we've got uh, more income from, from the whole building, even the, the rent is low. And also downstairs, the commercial the shop, we haven't, uh, we, it's a commercial shop downstairs, the, food, the ground floor, and that gives us a, a lot more income. So it's not belonging to the village. It's a separate thing for us to earn uh, more money to, to sustain the whole thing. And then, um, so, uh, so yeah, things expand. And then next slide, next slide, please. Okay, then since 2018, uh, we try to develop our curatorial capacity because, because uh, ECHO has a, 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 a one special feature. We allow our, our full-time staff to do what they like to do because, I, because they're all learning art. So I have no worry that they will go, go beyond art and culture. So uh, at that time, Susie uh, was our manager. She was very interested in, uh, ex uh, in uh, developing her curatorial capacity. So I changed one of the unit into a gallery. 
And this gallery, other than we curate programs, we also let the others, the outsiders, to use it. Whether you're an artist or you are not an artist, whether you are developed or not developed, doesn't matter, you know. Because in Hong Kong, it's very difficult for, for artists or artist entities to find space to hold exhibitions. Uh, so uh, just to let you know, up to now, uh, we have full booking until the year after. So nobody can book up uh, our gallery anymore for this particular two, uh, in the coming two years. And uh, also, because we have built up our strength, our credibility, so um, uh, we try to help uh, some outside, outside the cultural entities to, to, to do their things. Uh, there is one particular case, it's called the Kids Club. Uh, we try to, uh, they're at the farming stage, and they have got a farmhouse, as you can see. It was in a very dilapidated state. And then we try to uh, gather resources for them to renovate this particular farmhouse. And now, as in two years, and then many kids uh, go there to, 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 to learn from farming to table and also to learn art and culture. So we can't do it. You know, we echo, we food law cannot do it, but the others can do it. So we will let those people do it, but we will try to help to facilitate them. And uh, also we build up our educational strength at this particular moment. And also at this particular moment, because we have resources, we, we, we reach out a lot more. Uh, we, we think that we should not just give up, but people should learn to share. So I invent a term, it's called shareism, but it's not, you cannot find it in uh, Wikipedia. But uh, internally, I would call it shareism, you know. Next slide. Uh, I'm, is it, I'm good with time, is it? Oh, yeah. Okay, since 2000, and then <laughs> COVID. COVID is a difficult time, I think, everywhere in the world. So uh, for the rental, we even, uh, you know, uh, some units cannot afford the rent. Even it's low. So we, we they don't need to pay for a certain period of time, or we try to minimize their, their rent and so they can survive. And uh, we also, okay, next slide. Five, 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 five. Ah, okay, so this is our band program. So we, we organize all kinds of band programs, uh, readers in residence, creative, curatorial, all kinds of things you, you are doing now, all right? Next slide. Okay, uh, okay, now these are some case studies, and this is very important. This is one of the particular cases about connection, you know. We connect an artist, it's not, it's not our artist actually, it's a, it's a veteran artist outside, but uh, he wanted us to have to sell his uh, artwork, but we actually, we didn't have the capacity, but we did two times, but uh, you know, to some extent it's successful, but not so successful in a way. So we tried to link him up with a commercial gallery and uh, he saw all his paintings. So uh, we, we have to know, you know, when are the expert is outside and then try to link up the two resources. The artist resources, the artwork, but for the, but for the gallery, you know, they have the expertise in, uh, in uh, promoting acquisition. So that's one case, another case. Okay. Uh, this is another one. This, uh, this, this, this group is inside uh, Fudalao. And they are uh, a group of young people. They are, they are not radical, but they are very creative. And uh, they, they recently, they, they, they made a, a, state, a manifesto about free filmmaking. Actually, it's about independent filmmaking. Because filmmaking is now a rather, it's, it's, another, it's another issue in Hong Kong. So the, they, they try to make interesting short, short films and also make a manifesto about how to do free filmmaking in Hong Kong. Next. And, uh, uh, and internal collaboration, you know, uh, another group is called Corrupt the Youth, huh? terrible name. Uh, uh, <laughs> terrible, okay, corrupt the youth. But actually, it's a philosophical, it's a, it's a young group containing uh, a phil, uh, young philosophers or young phil, phil, philosophy students. And they, 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 they tell young people about philosophy. And actually, interestingly, they have a lot of collaboration with outsiders. Uh, because um, recently, I think in the past two or three years, many more organizations would like uh, to touch on philosophy, something metaphysical. Okay. So they have collaboration, you know, with the, 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 the group I just mentioned. Internal kind of collaboration. Okay, next. And then ex, ex, uh, external. Uh, this one is interesting. There's an artist, independent artist, uh, also cultural worker. He couldn't find the resources to hold an exhibition and also to publish a book on his past two years collaboration with a newspaper, a Sunday, Sunday supplement. And uh, so uh, we try to help him to facilitate him and to uh, get him some resources. So now he has just finished the exhibition and also have published a book. And uh, so as you can see, the resource sorry, actually go beyond. Huh? All right. Next. 
Okay, collaborating and supporting, nothing there. Why? <laughs> This is for the future. It's a limited future. The future. Oh, the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, go. Let me forget this one. Okay, forget this one. You imagine. Okay, use imagination. <laughs> and for this one, this is about uh, another unit now. This is a particular issue because in Hong Kong, many artists will still engage themselves in pure art creation, and I don't think it's. Uh, Is not the full picture because uh, if you uh, if uh, you, you you really want to have financial income, you may need to go into the creative industry or the cultural industry. And uh, this particular guy, he's actually he study art, but I uh, let him you know try out uh, cultural entrepreneurship or uh, alternative uh, gallery model, uh, so that uh, experiment it. And uh, so far, he has been there for one year. He did quite well. And uh, I hope that he could become successful in、um, in doing something alternative, you know, in in the context of、uh, the gallery and also in the context of cultural entrepreneur. Because being a cultural entrepreneur, you can earn a lot more money than you could help the others. Yeah, because we have two cases in Futalao,、uh, two cases that、uh, they have turned into. They really could stand up as a cultural entrepreneur, and they earn a lot more money, and they you know pile back the money to the to the、uh, others. Okay,、uh, now this one is、uh, because of COVID, some artists could not uh, uh, do well. You know, they need、uh, something, so、uh, we try to organize uh, uh, programs for them to 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 earn money. You know, and so this is one particular case, and、uh, his resources is his poetry. And our resources, the connection, and also the space. So the two things go together, and the things happen. All right. Go 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 go. Do do do. Finish. Am I finished? I should be finished. Okay. Go to the last page. The model. The the the, the reverse、uh, triangle. The reverse triangle. The reverse triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Okay. So we suggest.、Uh, We we started with、uh, creativity, and then you know at the beginning, and then we add in、uh, a lot of, of other programs, reading, educational, and uh, 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 cultural entrepreneurship. And what actually we look for? Okay, we look for a more vibrant and diverse uh, 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 space for socio cultural ecology in in Hong Kong at least. Okay, so we change from individual to collectives. And we do ex、uh, we did alternative experimentalism things to tourism, and、uh, so that's that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, May. Thank you for sharing with us six stage of fruit type buildings development, and we will have、more. actually it's a lot more, but yeah, no, no time. We will continue. I don't know that we can be so hurried in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will have more conversation during the、um, discussion part. So now、uh, let me invite.、Uh, Tan Guo Hin,、uh, who is an artist in Hong Kong, who found the 1983,、uh, he transformed his、uh, ancestor village house into a gathering space for artists and thinkers in Hong Kong and overseas. So、um, I hand over your time to him. So to start,、uh, we watched another video first. So it's very different region. So just now you see it's a city center. So this is another region of Hong Kong, which is at the new territory side.
So good afternoon, good afternoon, Castle. And actually, uh, 983 have uh, two founders. Uh, uh, me is Tan Kok Hin. I'm actually a visual artist, and another co-founder, Yang Yang, is over there. And <laughs> yeah, maybe we can have more conversation then later. Yeah, 1983 actually situated in Hong Kong, Canton War Village. War Village means there's really a wall, uh, kind of uh, surrounding some houses inside. So next page. And before some history and context of the space and the village, maybe I just show you some old photos in the village. Uh, there are actually my uh, relatives and even my father are inside. So I actually look at, while well, I look at these images of photos and I just, uh, at that time, maybe we, we still don't have to work collective because we are all relatives and then living together, share everything, toilet, and then parents take care of other family, children. Yeah, all people living together, play together. And that, that big guy is my father. And is this actually the same space of 1983 before it, it is called 1983? And it's all my siblings, and in the in the center is me. Yeah, this is the, I'm actually the the youngest boy in the same generation. And Tang Tang clan is actually uh, one of the uh, five great clans of the new territories, and the others are Man, Hao, Pang, and Lu in Hong Kong. And the Tang family is one of the oldest and largest uh, Chinese language, language, languages in Hong Kong, New Territory is actually settled in the, the that area 800 years ago. And next one. Next page. And yeah, just show you some images uh, during the festival, what we do. Um, during the Chinese New Year, actually, maybe most people will know Chinese New Year, New Year uh, Mid Autumn Festival. One special one called Da Jiu Festival, and it actually uh, before the COVID, actually uh, we always do some big gatherings, all the relatives uh, sitting together to eat. And this is the Da Jiao Festival. Every ten years in the World Village, and six all World Village will come together to have such big event. We will parade on the streets and we will kind of uh, even traveling from Camden to Yunnan to another uh, close by city. So we, are, we have a very big bamboo uh, structure during the Daja Festival and also uh, kind of we call this uh, King of Ghosts. It's two to three stories high and we will take, take this uh, paper sculpture walk with us uh, during the parade. And this is the family tree, all the names are uh, on the paper. I just try to uh, try to link some to collective meaning. What yeah, what is the collective? Why we why we are together? And then show you some uh, basic buildings and structure in in the wall versus the gates. And the next one, and inside the gate, there's some uh, plaques from the the ancestors. It's some kind of award of, uh, from the ancestors, yeah. And through the gates, and behind the gates, there's some yeah, paintings. Uh, from the eagle view, you can see that there wall. Actually, this is not my village, it's another wall village, but you can see that uh, the wall surrounding the houses. And then this is another wall village called uh, Gaheng Wai. And, uh, and Central Hall, yeah, for mainly for praying the ancestors. And we have actually quite a lot of this paper and bamboo sculpture thing. And the old house we recall brick house. And actually there are quite a, quite a lot are now abandoned and no one living there because it's, you know, as you know, after 800 years, uh, that's kind of hard to say who owned the house. So many, there are many cases that just live there, the house just live there, no one living inside. Some houses we will rebuild it, and then we, you can see the image like uh, in the next line. That you, you can see the quite a lot abandoned houses. The new one we call village house under small house policy since 1972. It's actually kind of a, that time is the UK government say uh, kind of a deal with the uh, villagers. 
because uh, really just kind of uh, sell uh, so many lands to the government that the government give the this right to build a house, three story house, and each story seven square feet, and ground floor, second floor, third floor, and then this is the 1983 case. Uh, we have 800 square feet because we combine two whites to build it. And the ground floor is mainly the 1983 uh, space and also the studio, second floor is my living place. And then the third floor also living place and storage. And then we have rooftop. Yeah, and then this is just the local of 1983 in Chinese. And the next next slide. And just show you some uh, events we have done before screenings and yeah, the next one. Yeah, this is actually kind of the history of uh, why why I kind of uh, transform my 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 uh, village house to a space. It's actually from the two two o one seven. Is the video touch the previous director with uh, Isaac Lang. Uh, we just uh, we're going to have an exhibition in Hong Kong Visual Art Center, maybe something like that. And then Tango Him, maybe you can just make something you never did before. Then anyway, let's gather let's let's gather in the gallery and then at that time actually i have a plan actually it's a trap it's a trap too <laughs> because someone some i just open call some new friends or strangers come to my house i can go back as an exchange but you can say no but this is actually some i just want to go in somebody's home by this reason it's for me it's a kind of ritual i need to invite you to my place first and then i go to yours and then the next one yeah, so there's, there's some images uh, during the dinners. Uh, over, after all, there's uh, around 80 guests come to my house uh, separate by four dinners. And after that show, because I eventually I don't have enough time to uh, go to, I went to the, the other's uh, friend's home or the, the people join the dinners, uh, I, I have plenty time to go to their home. But after that show, I kind of make it happen in, in a show called Effie Pandicure at Tycoon Contemporary, also in Hong Kong. It's kind of a Hong uh, art museum. And eventually, I kind of uh, visit many uh, friends' home or new friends' home. This is, this is actually the installation uh, at Tycoon, and we make many happenings there. And there's some, yeah, some photos while I visit their home. And then while I visit that home, I think that I need to transform it as a as a, a record or as a extension. And uh, be, uh, during the uh, the daytime and nighttime, I visit that friend before the dinner. Yeah, daytime I just set a camera, and then the that friend can select uh, a space she feels uh, safe or she feel comfortable. And then I just set the camera in front of her to take a. 30 minutes short of video, and then I just hide somewhere. And then so, uh, so you may kind of regard that camera as me or somebody's. And then I, the only question I ask her is, what are you going to do today? Because 30 minutes is quite long. And during that time, she so may be uh, remain silent or suddenly she will say something that kind of uh, in her mind at that time, because it's kind of cannot be asked. Some some question cannot be asked, then they can, yes, she can reveal at that time. And then at night time I do it as well. And her family will also join together to listen what she's saying. And there's some uh, friend's house I visit. Next one. I see Yang Yang. Uh, actually, we become very close uh, during the, that project. And then we yeah, kind of co found 1983. And then even we go to some hotel at, at yeah, if, if the house is not quite uh, available for visiting. And some happenings uh, on the stage uh, at, during the show. Uh, some yeah, musical performance by a cellist. The next one. Okay, two minutes. Okay, okay, next one. Good, yeah, and then the ninety eighty three. Yeah, because after the show, I just because there's some people just gather. I just don't let want to let every project kind of project based. I just wanted to keep a kind of sustainable connection. So I just transformed, redecorate my, my uh, ground floor of the space and it become a kind of gathering private and semi-private, semi-public space. And then I call it 1983 is actually just my birth year. And then the next one, yeah, this one event, photo book uh, gathering. 
happenings, uh, some physical and virtual conversation during some shows. Yeah, some musical performance. Yeah, we share food. Maybe we we jump to the slide that uh, some yeah with many works. <laughs> the next one. Yeah, actually, uh, while we kind of cooperate and then we do kind of different transformation of our project outside the space. Next one, next one. It's more like the performative installation of happenings yeah, outside the space. We do something like that. Next one, next one, next one. And actually, because of this practice, actually uh, change my mind. Every time I involve different different project, I also try to involve more people to join to talk. And what do we saw? We yeah, we do potluck food and drinks, ideas, vision, living styles, joy, sadness, hatred, anxiety, and and space for screening, discussion, workshop, talks, and we work together as an organic collective to create project inside or or outside ninety three, and. Now, if we, maybe as, as a safe space for you to say something that you yeah, you feel safe here inside the space and private space at, as new public, maybe it's a, a concept we can we consider private space as new public. And we sometimes we do some uh, kind of free pricing uh, happenings. And then next one. Uh, some limitation in Hong Kong, maybe just may have mentioned some uh, yeah, rents, lack of, uh, Agriculture industry, retail and service as the main politics, freedom of speech. How to survive? Maybe it cannot be survived, but not if it still exists. But maybe it's actually because of private property. Yeah, the next one. Uh, yeah, next one. If we don't have enough time yet, next one. And yeah, we influence one another. There's no pressure to join each gathering, sharing, screening, or whatever, but there's no pressure to work together too, but we can. We understand that everyone needs space physically and mentally. We understand that everyone needs loneliness for daydreaming and healing. Therefore, we also experience the silence. Then maybe the next slide. Uh, actually, uh, if someone uh, interested, you can search uh, a poet. The, he uh, wrote a poet called Leave Contact Before. And then I, can, I think he kind of talked about the meaning of collective. Yeah, Yasi. Yeah, it's the poet is called Yasi. The, the final page, maybe. And uh, yeah, this small conclusion again, why do we gather in documenta, food, tech, food tech building, the war, uh, war wage 1983, while entering a museum? We have a distance to re encounter life. But uh, while we get there here and there, uh, can we create a distance to re encounter contemporary art or, or art that we are making? Is it the timing to reconsider what we are doing? And for me, I still believe that, believe that creation and transformation come from temperature and wave of life rather than anything of dying symbols and definitions. Yeah, maybe I just end here because I don't have time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Sin, for uh, sharing this interesting story. And next, we will have Farid Rakun, uh, part of Ruang Rupa. Uh, he will share more about the Ruang Rupa practice and story. Farid, uh, please. Hello, hello. Uh, if someone can just like use that, yeah. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I hope I'm not going to speak too long because I know uh, we're late. But we started Ruang Rupa is from two words, Ruang and Rupa. Ruang is space. So that's why it's very important for us, the space itself. We came out of the street of Jakarta. So we're like, you know, we're, we're that type of creature. Well, Jakarta is very much, uh, uh, thing for us, and then uh, we used and started like a lot of collectives from Indonesia, turning domestic spaces to much more public, uh, or sometimes we use public space for others. This is like the only time, the first and only time we did an exhibition, and then it, we even like you know use it, uh, realizing that space is something that we can flip, let's say, subvert. And then uh, 
space is something that we always share, not only physical, like this one, a big thing, but also conceptual. So uh, we started with the notion of space that's kind of like uh, 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 abstract as well, that uh, before we could do a lot of things with physical space, a lot of our interests were not accommodated by the ecosystem at that moment, you know? So we made space for students, we made space for uh, video art, we made space because at that moment video was not spoken about. We didn't know that much, but still we made a space for it. Uh, and then we, we realized up until a long time uh, that space is actually very useful for us also as a curatorial method. Uh, that's the reason why we have Ruru House, let's say, something like Ruru House that uh, for you who are in Kassel uh, can experience it directly. It was started in, a, in an idea. This is not a new idea. We've done it several times before, even when we were only invited as artists. We didn't call it Ruru House maybe, but how to use a space and then we share it to others, especially to our neighbors. With, uh, with Castle, especially, uh, with Ruru House, we kind of like, uh, uh, we thought we could start a space, so we didn't land in Castle as an alien, which is very important for us, but understand what type of uh, opportunities and initiatives that are already in Castle or uh, at that moment, and then we can work together with them to amplify, not to be in competition with, because a lot of times Documenta took over a lot of things uh, from Castle itself, and then it becomes too big as a, as a, as a tree, and then put shadows on other plants, no? As an analogy, it's not perfect, but it does an analogy, hopefully it works. Uh, and then, so it's not a programmed space. It's much more a space that we can use uh, together and then we can share it together as well with the team because uh, we learned that the team had that, that, that need to also move and work uh, somewhere else. Documenta is not a big, never a big team, but it expanded during every edition of Documenta. So their working space usually started quite small, but then it became bigger when the need came, comes, you know. Uh, so then it becomes also uh, uh, an office space, et cetera, et cetera. We never thought it's going to be that big. It's going, not going to be that center. It doesn't need to be that uh, 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 colorful and visible. But because of what we're lucky that we can do it that way. So it's fine. Uh, and then especially afterwards, like right now, it can be used or for other things. The Welcome Center, also some exhibitions, especially for Castle Ecosystem, our friends in Castle can take it and make something out of it and all those kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, so we can share it with uh, Castle, let's say. Uh, the space that you're sitting in, actually, it's also Friedrichiano. For those who are in Fredericiano, I'm sorry for those who are not there or who hasn't visited that it becomes much more abstract maybe. But uh, hopefully I'm not going to talk in details, but why we're doing it that way, we ask artists. We didn't have scenography that put artists already design on where they're going in Fredericiano, but we kind of like make a majlis or an assembly, we call it, and then they decide together how to share the space. And then uh, by themselves, I shared archive is part of that, of course, uh, they decide that it's going to be neighborhood. Hopefully it comes through, translated well in the experience of visitors. Uh, and then with good school as well, like it becomes a neighborhood that like, you know, 
uh, as different functions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but in the building, because we want, we we were trying to break the space itself, like the history of the space, the loaded uh, meaning of the space that it's like you know oldest museum, as JJ said before, and it becomes living, becomes uh, dynamic, it becomes ever changing, etc. The way we understand it, our practice to be since we started because we sometimes we some of us lives lived still lives in in our space you know like all those kind of stuff and then we think it's important that way uh so sharing also becomes like in an exhibition format sharing becomes like less maybe not none but at least less competitive this is kind of like the experiment that we're doing and then it has been very very surprisingly uh, positive, at least for us in, in our experience. It's, we are also surprised, let's say, how things happen. Uh, and then I think uh, it's not only in Friedrichianum, but like also in different places. In Documenta, we, we don't really, we didn't really assign artists in their spaces, but we keep on talking about stuff and then thinking about documenta as a bank of resource that we can we can share further. That's why the, the extended the keep the invitations keep on extended up until it's like thousand five hundred at least or something. So that's where the sharing and then we can understand as well documenta as a space, of course, well, both physically and conceptually. I'll stop there. Hopefully, it's not too long or not too short either. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Farid, for sharing this experience and story. Uh, next, we will have Angga Wijaya, part of Good School and Serum, uh, an art collective focus on art and education. Angga will share more about how Good School operates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, I will start the slide. Yes, I will start from uh, this uh, photo. Uh, this photo is a uh, pair of the sandal in the form of a uh, good school auditorium. Uh, this sandal uh, belong uh, from the neckbone of good school uh, who came when the out of the public program in the auditorium. And uh, this photo is a uh, show how to public respond uh, to the space in the good school and uh, because uh, taking off sandal before entering the room is a common uh, habit in Indonesia. So uh, after this slide, uh, I will continue with uh, this uh, house because uh, before we, we became a good school, uh, as a share ecosystem, uh, we start uh, it uh, as an artist run space at our artist uh, initiative or uh, many names uh, or alter alternative space in 2000. For example, uh, Ruang Rupa uh, was funded in 2000 and Serum uh, in 2006. It's not only the host from the good, uh, Serum or uh, Ruang Rupa, uh, many hosts from the other collective in Indonesia, uh, also not only in Jakarta, uh, also in Bandung and Yogyakarta. And uh, set of the host, uh, uh, set of the space always host. <coughs> So uh, we ran the house uh, as a collective space, and the house uh, has many functions. We we live uh, living in the house uh, twenty four hours and run the public program, uh, make exhibition. Uh, sometimes the house uh, changing to a store, cafe, and also have a library and many things. Uh, so the space is a uh, private, uh, semi-private, and after uh, we running 
the alternative space in the house we uh, next slide Yeah, we start to thinking to make a collective pot and because uh, renting the house is very uh, yeah, financial constraint. Uh, every every year we uh, must to be pay and uh, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it's very expensive in Jakarta and we thinking to how we making a like collective pot and share the resource together in from the collective uh, in Jakarta. And so we move to Gudang Sarina uh, ecosystem. Uh, it's a warehouse, a big warehouse. And uh, we put our resource, our program, and the many things we have and we share together in this space. Uh, Uh, yes, managing a warehouse uh, with the large scale is uh, also requires large cost. So we uh, thinking again to uh, next slide. Thinking again to move again. Uh, in 2018, uh, we moved to subvention uh, space, uh, subvention scale and space to the minutes uh, together and became a good school. We bought a piece of mini soccer before and uh, we we don't build uh, the space uh, from the scratch, but we assembling uh, material from the Gudang Sarina ecosystem before in, in the warehouse and uh, we install the container like this and uh, and respond the space uh, as needed uh, and always changing after the after now <coughs> and next slide <coughs> that is a picture of the situation in the good school this uh, good school space and after uh, finish the building in the good school we are so thinking to make uh, artist uh, this the yeah, artist campan and so we rent the neighborhood land and we building the artist campan to artist designer publisher to can run in there and so we make a, a big ecosystem and still connecting with, to working together and next slide yeah this uh, class uh, in the good school uh, we thinking about the our sustainability going forward how we are experience and knowledge uh, we can share and sustain so we make a school uh, but it's not strict uh, classroom uh, still multifunction and temporary uh, if uh, you can see the next slide yeah sometimes we uh, making class in there but sometimes uh, always changing like uh, the photo in the right and the top this uh, we changing the class as a factory because the pandemic situation uh, we don't have uh, yeah, in, in, in the Jakarta situation uh, the uh, facial is very limited for the medicine and we uh, make a solidarity to make a facial and give to the medical center and so we changing the classroom as a factory also this uh, picture uh, you can see this uh, January 24 2020 have uh, like uh, uh, many people come to auditorium because we have a music performance from Senyawa is very full of uh, people in the good school, not only the auditorium, also in the outside good school. And in the March 2020 is 
changing uh, because pandemic situation. So the auditorium uh, will be uh, as a factory to we, uh, make a vessel for the medical center. Yeah, for me, uh, for us, the good school is very temporary space and uh, yeah, very fluid and organically. <clears throat> Next slide. Yeah, uh, beside that, uh, the school we mean is not strict. Uh, we always use the classroom as a place uh, to learn. Uh, class can be anywhere in the kitchen. Uh, yeah, for this, this picture uh, in the backyard under the tree. So we call the method uh, for the school study collective is a non-crown curricula. So we hang out together uh, in anywhere and uh, make the friends, learn from friends and self-organize. So <clears throat> next slide. Yeah, this uh, uh, the experience from the class in the good school study collective, we move to, the, to, this, to this space in the Frederick Sianum, the preschool to running the uh, good school study collective in here. Yeah, this situation uh, how the class uh, uh, run in here. And next slide is, yeah, sometimes, uh, yeah, the class also sometimes the uh, friends uh, sleep in, uh, in the class, uh, live in the class and uh, so we uh, thinking to also make a dormitory for the next slide. Yeah, uh, we making dormitory in the museum Predictionum bisa, uh, behind this. And so uh, friends come uh, and learning in here together and uh, live in here. Also next slide. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we always uh, make a food together, cooking together, and uh, if uh, have a opening exhibition or a birthday party or anything, we always uh, cooking together and uh, eat together, like this picture. So, uh, yeah, uh, we thinking to also make a kitchen in here, in the Fredrikshanum, the preschool, beside the museum. So, next slide. We can see the picture. Yeah, this uh, we are kitchen in here. Uh, yeah, many people come and can cooking together, and also the we and many friends every day cooking together and eat together. And yeah, uh, this situation in the good school in here, and. Of course, we <laughs> make a party in the night, uh, make a karaoke time, and yeah, it's like uh, how we make a friends together and uh, singing together, and yeah, and it, uh, yeah, uh, happy together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this sign, uh, the right sign you can see is the in it is in the good school. Uh, the mean is a drunken ones are not allowed in sleep in the class, and this uh, sign is in the dormitory. You can you drunk outside, you jackpot on your bed, but that's not your collective problem. It's like the sign is like a yeah, semi regulation. We uh, make it for the uh, make uh, like uh, infrastructure for the collective. Uh, work and yeah because so many people you know how to manage they are uh, to uh, to uh, to live together and the next slide yeah in the next slide uh, i want to closing this uh, presentation uh, yeah for we love together with the, this mem this meme Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anga, May.
May please come back. So um, thank you for our four speakers. I think now we have a kind of a conversation session. Uh, JJ and I will both ask the first question and then we will open it up to our friends on Zoom and in Hong Kong and here in Castle. The first question, um, in fact, I would like to ask more about how this kind of shared space model um, help you to think more about the collective practice and learning. So to be more specific, like May, you have mentioned about uh, in Futa building, uh, there are more collective uh, experience now, you have internal uh, collaboration and external collaboration, but it seems that I, I understand it in terms of education side, the learning side, you also um, address that, I mean, can you say a bit more about the alternative addressing oh, okay. side? Um, actually, uh, this this particular uh, aspiration came from my uh, running the school of creativity. Uh, I, re I, I retired from it, and then uh, I, uh, based on my uh, reflection, I think uh, other than the formal education, the informal education is just as important, if not more. Particularly, not just for the students, for the young people, but for the people, for the public at large. So um, uh, at that particular moment, I think it's around uh, 2016, 17 or 15, I, I couldn't remember exactly the, the time. But then uh, I tried to let some, uh, not just young groups, but say like a Lao Dong Gong Hao, uh, okay, Hoi Bo's, Hoi Bo's uh, uh, organization. Um, uh, I tried to let uh, very well-educated people to come into Futa Lao to form uh, their own cluster, their own group, and then they can continue their way of uh, doing educational programs to the public at large. For example, they even teach people how to make beer because, uh, you know, making things by yourself actually is the starting point to get more independent or more, you know, you can do you can develop your own capability. So that's one case. And also there is another one like the Roof, uh, Roof, Rooftop Institute. And the East Young Group uh, uh, contained two uh, artists. But then uh, when they came in, they, they specified clearly that they want to do more uh, art education things. So uh, so that's why, you know, they, 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 they were in and uh, they were there for uh, a few years. So um, uh, there are also other groups. When they come in, they definitely will try to do some educational programs for their own particular discipline, like a publication and they would conduct uh, workshops or uh, for, for, uh, whatever kind of things to teach people how to appreciate literature, all these things. So uh, uh, from as from 2015 or 16, uh, education has become a particularly informal kind of education, but it has become kind of a um, prerequisite to go into for that long. Yeah. Thank you, May. Um, I want to ask Hin. Uh, Hin, you're an artist. You work on Da Your Own in the past. Like, I'm just curious how this collective practice changed you or how this, how did you learn through this collective practice? How does it influence your own practice? Yeah, uh, you know, in Hong Kong, we normally uh, just gather at the opening, I mean, the show's opening. We, we don't really gather actually, we just uh, see others work in the gallery and that we never talk like in a gathering actually. Mm -hmm. So we never gather actually except the openings we see each other. So this one thing that uh, every artist just work on their own. So just, at some point you think that, hmm, maybe kind of enough in this model maybe for me as a pursuit, maybe, maybe I just want to have an experiment like this try to mm, accept the gathering, accept the gathering in the opening. How about we gather, we really gather, how about we, if we really gather what we can generate? And then this is the reason why uh, uh, do the gatherings and how the gathering transform me. Uh, maybe I mentioned a bit uh, before, it's just now every time I, I, I work with some institution like Hong Kong Art Center uh, as a collective, I also try to involve the, the members working in Hong Kong Art Center. Because there are some actually artists working in Hong Kong Art Center. There's maybe there are some very creative mind inside Hong Kong Art Center. So I just want to kind of deconstruct somehow the institution itself. Maybe actually we can play together if we just really believe yeah, one another. So this what uh, by a collective teach me is yeah, maybe we can actually we can be more open minded in in different way of making art. Or, or stay together. Yeah, that's uh, my experience. 
Thank you. Um, Anka, um, collective practice, like I'm just curious about your bringing uh, Cusco space here in documentary. So how does the learning change? Like um, you guys, do you think about collective practice? here in Documento, how does this experience of thinking together with a wider group of collectives, and even your collective studies is, because for Cusco is very interesting, Cusco is a collective of collectives. So it's not only one collective, one collective, but a collective of collectives. So how is this learning different and expand? Because I know that you're also one of the collective member of Serum. Serum is one collective members of the uh, good school. So, but by working together with other collectives, so what are the challenge and what are the things you learn that which you may otherwise not be able to learn within your own collective? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, we uh, are working with the other collective uh, as a participant for the good school study collective. It's not like uh, uh, like we make. Uh, make like uh, gifts knowledge to them to to but uh, we sharing like it's forum the 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 experience in from the third best because we open call for the collective uh, and the focus for for the Indonesian collective the many many uh, collective from the other city and other island and yeah for our experience it's not like we give uh, the knowledge from there and but we also learn from uh, from there and so yeah it's like a forum and exchange knowledge and uh, to make a friends make a networking to be uh, to still con uh, uh, connecting like yeah 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 uh, Susana yeah like you said about the collective or collective so we can make like uh, still connecting to to make an ecosystem to sustain together yeah so the challenging is yeah if yeah because the time i think because it's uh, in the scholar to uh, we in the batch five we running the gusco study collective in here uh, we run uh, for uh, for uh, 50 days is is different uh, before we running the good school study collective in one year so the bonding time is very uh, limited for uh, this uh, uh, beds and I think yeah or, but they are uh, living together in here is opportunity to they are uh, make uh, uh, the time many time to bonding together mm. Yeah, uh, based on my experience with Fu Tak Lao uh, in Hong Kong, uh, initially at the early stage of formation, uh, there are only individual artists mainly, and for creation. Okay, so it's okay. You know, be, being an artist, you just want to be by stay by yourself and don't bother me, right? But then gradually, uh, when the socio cultural environment in Hong Kong changes, and uh, uh, we think that uh, there should be more small groups. You know, because clusters could contain uh, a few individuals that are good at different things. And then it would become more, how should I put it, more, uh, the capacity uh, for making change would be greater. And so that's why I, uh, uh, well, uh, this high sight, okay, uh, tactically or strat strategically, I try to let groups and to go into Futala rather than individual artists. And also I encourage people to form into groups small groups to do things is because it's more you have more strength and resources thank you and i want to extend this question to farid uh, farid basically you are extending this space the document 15 space to more and more and more people in collective so i'm curious about your learning as from group first members um how was your experience in terms of rethinking about collective practice and learning through Documento 15 by opening it up with more collectives and people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for the question and having me. It's been a steep learning curve as well, you know, because a lot of things, uh, we realize that it's risky as well uh, to keep on extending. But it is kind of like that risk is worthwhile for us to take because for those who have experienced 
Documenta 15 on the ground because we're making it like some sometimes people think that oh, the question becomes like who are we making it for uh it's kind of like for when it is on the ground it's clear like the question got answered automatically you know for those who can experience it uh uh then it is kind of like worthwhile for us fortunately uh, we've managed to reach that point it was also a surprise for us honestly you know that like times we don't uh, agree with things and all those kind of stuff uh it's okay it is it is like this the other side of the same coin let's say for us and then on the learning i think uh uh i have at least for us in round rupa we have to give distance or after this on how we can move on i know for example for us and good school we're planning to take a break after the documenta like the the what the uh regular good school program for example after this batch five which is happening right now in castle we're going to take a break at least for a year to rethink again what we can be because we've been we've been running we are all of course excited uh the energy because we have so many people fortunately the energy can be kept uh high at least from a distance because i'm not there right now uh also in good school for example 100 days etc uh but it is uh we're all going i know we're all some of us are already uh and but i know in the end we're all we're all going to be exhausted so we have to take care of that as well in order for us to be able to continue learning again otherwise it's difficult to do so at least hopefully i understand your your question correctly and answering it actually in that direction the right direction as well susana thank you Thank you, Farid. Maybe this um, this question can be answered one years later. I will ask you again. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Thank you uh, all for the answer. I I will ask another question. Uh, Oske, just tell me that we only have ten minutes left for this session. Uh, my question would be like, uh, yeah, we uh, I actually learned so much that you already have practiced for more than twenty years and uh, doing kind of public program, exhibition, workshop, classes, and yearly regular uh, program. So the question is like, what is the strategy to maintain the operational, financial, or even like the uh, ideological sustainability to your space? Yeah, all of us, you, you can jump to answer. <laughs> Maybe I can answer if you don't mind. Uh, yes. Okay. yes. Uh, well, you know, uh, uh, I can uh, I can answer the ideological part I think as well because as you know Je, uh, but it's good that you ask this question because we can share it to others in good school at least we know that like uh, we should not be exclusive uh, in a lot of ways we try at least maybe we we haven't been that successful yet but we try. Uh, by realizing that like uh, we shouldn't work only with like uh, certain ideological or political uh, affiliations. So we have in Wood School, for example, one of the uh, beautiful pictures at least that we can share is like when anarchists can work side to side, uh, side by side with uh, but those who are like you know borderline hardcore muslims for example or uh, those who are uh, from different class of the society of course that's kind of like easy or like then it's not about proving certain theories or political stance but actually practicing it that like uh, we can uh, 
continue and be open and etc. Although of course it's not without challenges, but uh, uh, we can do it that way. And then space, I think, again for me, for us, space is that way. It's not only about uh, physical, but also giving space and time for those things to to balance itself let's say and then we cannot take shortcuts in it i have to say that's it well hopefully it's not taking too much space for the other side well uh talking about sustainability uh in terms of finance and also in ideology it's not easy to, to respond, you know, particularly in Hong Kong. Actually, you know that, uh, I know that there are many uh, artists and artists have difficulty financially. But then for my particular uh, space, Futalao, I think in a way, it's fortunate that uh, the foundation uh, believe in us uh, and uh, let us have the, the re required financial resource to do things without relying on any particular body, funders, like other foundations, the government, whatnot. So at the moment, it is fine. So that's why, uh, and also, um, I try not to build up too big a team myself. Uh, I don't want it to be program-oriented. And I hope that uh, I can use the resources, the financial resources, or the space, or the physical, or whatever kind of services uh, as we uh, uh, talk about, uh, that uh, we hope that others, either inside Futalao or outside Futalao, you know, to get the resources. So uh, I tend to be very sensitive about what's going on in the society, in, in the community. When when I notice from the Facebook or whatever, someone has got some difficulties, then I will chip in and ask whether they would need any a particular resource to do things like a coding exhibition, need a space, or at least some small amount of money. So it's become quite a quite a informal kind of a ways to 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 share our resources. But then about ideal ideology uh, is even more difficult because uh, Futalao since its inception. Because I, I I'm kind of a, well I'm not a radical. I was not a radical. Okay, but um, uh, um, uh, I'm not political. But then. I do hope that uh, uh, you know there can be a lot of differences in the society. So uh, and also something outside the the the, the, the norm. That's why for Futalao we advocate experimentalism, alternative kind of doing uh, doing art, and uh, you know uh, because because there are a lot of people doing mainstream things. Why should we do that? You know. So uh, I, I would prefer that, and uh, and also we would like to be free, as uh, I told you. You know because uh, uh, there are two conditions: no rent and also uh, no manage no management. <laughs> over the, uh, the, the the different uh, entities uh, residing inside for the law. So uh, I believe in all this. So that's why I hope that uh, uh, these things could be, could this ideology, if it's, if it were an ideology, okay, or just some thinking, some, some preference, some value, uh, I hope that uh, this could be maintained uh, within at least uh, for the law. But, but I have to admit that it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, not, it's not quite the same. So uh, we, so at the moment, uh, we would try to just do our, our things and uh, keep on, keep keep surviving, and then hopefully, uh, things would you know uh, would 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 just as good as before. Well, sustainability. Uh, actually, ninety three is actually quite small, and it's one of the reasons why it can survive. And then, ninety three actually is not kind of every open every day it opens while it there are some needs outside that some people want to make some events or some people want to uh, share something we open it so it's not uh, open every day if it is not open it return to my own living space yeah it's our own living studio so I think it's also a kind of uh, because collective or kind of uh, gathering is actually very exhausted yeah, why you are meeting so many people, but you can learn many things through the conversation. So there's some room for myself to to breathe a bit, except the gatherings or or conversations. So and I don't know because uh, maybe ninety three, this uh, the space itself is the spirit still want to keep some 
experimental spirit in Hong Kong, uh, especially because it's really hard to be experimental now compared to before. It's always hard, but I think it's even harder. So what we do always want to uh, tackle with uh, what society like. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. something like that. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I already answered from um, Farid uh, because Farid uh, many uh, uh, mentioned about the good school and yeah, I totally agree about the physical, uh, the space is not physically. Yeah, uh, because I uh, my slideshow is not uh, always uh, how uh, and what about the good school space. Also, uh, with the common habit, yeah, with the disease, uh, with the uh, situation and uh, yeah, yeah, standards and many things, <laughs> but uh, beyond the uh, space. Thank you. Um, I think uh, we now would like to open up uh, the question to floor. Um, we have this program until 3 p.m. and 9, 3 p.m. in here in Castle and 9 p.m. in Hong Kong. So uh, first of all, I would like to invite uh, K.Y. Wong from Hong Kong and who is now in Gothic Institute Hong Kong uh, with other audience. Uh, she is an artist who is also curating a show in Gothic Institute Hong Kong uh, to respond to our talk and also maybe to ask a question to our uh, speakers. Hi, hi everyone. Hi everyone in Castle in Hong Kong and thank you for coming tonight. Well, after, uh, thank you very much for sharing the, for the first hour and uh, I'm quite familiar with all the models here and, uh, and it's quite interesting to find a difference between the two models in Hong Kong with the two models in, um, in Jakarta. Uh, for example, uh, Rakuta, Wiren Krupa and also the uh, good school. Uh, the main difference I found is that uh, Ron Kruber and good school, it's uh, it's a form in a form of uh, individual get, get gathering together to group uh, to establish a collective or a, a group or association. But instead, uh, Hong Kong Fu Lao and 1983 uh, all start with a major um, donor or sponsor. Is it because of the Hong Kong situation? It's different from Southeast Asia. And also the second question is, do you think it's a good model or it's uh, the most effective way to to run a collective artist collective in Hong Kong, it's by a unitary governing uh, form instead of a self governing by artist form. Uh, are there any possibilities that people without such a major or big resource in Hong Kong can form something like this or something uh, influential uh, as Fu Dao Lao or One Night A3 in the future? And what is the experience? of Ron Cooper and also good school to start from zero uh, in uh, Jakarta. Thank you. But I think actually uh, a, a hint, hint's case, actually the good illustration of how an individual artist try to form, try, yeah, try to form uh, Collective, huh? isn't it? <laughs> Just like you, yeah, of course. But I and guess the, uh, the key yeah. question is both of you have the yeah. entity. Yeah, yeah. But both of uh, like uh, Ramgrupa and Kusku, they really form by themselves as individual with no resources. Go to but the, you yeah. have uh, someone uh, 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 offer, like sponsor offer, the building yeah. and he has a family house. But so they, uh, I think KY is asking, uh, how do you see the potential for artists uh, run um, collective? Oh, okay. Uh, actually, um, uh, uh, why artists? Actually, I've got uh, the, the the reason there um, in my PowerPoint. Because uh, being an artist, an artist with another artist, uh, even though we're very, very different, all right? You, you do this thing, I do this thing, I use this media and you use that media. But I think there are common interests, common understanding, and uh, also maybe some common belief as to what us could could be could be could could could, could flourish. You no, know, could be done. So uh, based on this um, uh, artistic uh, belief or understanding, uh, then um, uh, uh, if a group is formed by uh, artists, 
uh, they may be very different. They argue all the time, they quarrel, but at the end of the day, they 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 they, they will think that what we want to do is to to help art development, isn't it? So based on that, uh, I think uh, uh, having artists to form a cluster, if it were intended to be up for art development, okay, it would be better because I did try to get uh, some people not quite uh, art oriented into my team. It's different. Uh, the sensitivity and also the knowledge, the skill, they, they can also manage. But it's different from an artist, you know, uh, uh, oriented person to do the thing. Uh, the artist may not be a good manager, honestly, like me, you know, I'm very chaotic. But, <laughs> but I have a lot of sympathy or empathy towards uh, the other artists. So um, uh, at the end of the day, I still believe that if, uh, if uh, you know, if uh, a collective, it could be led by mainly by artists, it would be good. Of course, sometimes external expertise like accounting, all those things, money things, or um, really about management things, the policy, maybe some people can be an advisor and then help us out with the uh, systems. But uh, I think it's very dangerous for collectives to have a lot of systems. Yeah. So, Hin, you are run by space by yourself and you collaborate with Jian Yan. So, you are in different identity. One is artist, one is curators, writers, uh, manager, like organizer. So, how is the experience in that with yeah. someone who are not an artist? Yeah, because uh, kind of after the show at Tycoon, we become, we become very good friends uh, with Yang Yang. And I don't know, because I, I, I just think that I cannot do this thing on just by my own. And I actually, I want my my name can be, be more behind, actually, by yeah, by running this uh, collective. But like, I I know that it's, I know I know <laughs> because this is still my uh, kind of pirate property house. I mean, there's still some very great song inside. But I yeah, try just still doing with the struggling point. But I think this is uh, need to to have this approach. And I, I maybe we just try to refer to the KY questions. How Hong Kong? I think Hong Kong and Jakarta may be facing totally different difficulties and limitations. We have something very similar in Hong Kong. I think I don't know uh, if someone really want to kind of uh, make a new collective. I think they should try to refer to their own practice and then to let the, their own practice to be become a starting point or become the way to to form the collective because collective is something that I think you should be let that become part of your life. Otherwise, it's very hard to convince yourself to keep doing it and then to have the energy uh, occasionally. Yeah, I think it, it, you, need, you need to uh, become uh, let it become your belief and part of your life. This is I think the main spirit of collective, while well, people getting together have the same, share the same view or point of view for it. I think this link quite closely with uh, Ram Gupas. Very, you, I think the idea of values is very important uh, for Documenta 15. But uh, but just to answer uh, what KY asked, like at the beginning of forming the artists run collective, what are the challenge? Um, I mean, to go school and Ram Gupa. There are many challenges uh, up until now. But like values, for example, we're, we we were forced during this because we knew each other for a long time that we took a lot of things for granted. But when we started to expand working with others, let's say, and with other contexts as well, with Documenta 15, for example, we were forced to be much more specific of what we are doing. No? So values, as you said, I think it was a result of that, of the uh, process of, you know, request or like uh, need for us to be much more specific. Uh, and then the way we may, I think like there is, I have to, we have to be honest, uh, 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 it's not only about uh, strategies, but also lock that place in 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 a lot of things because it's kind of like uh, ingredients. People we can we can understand ourselves as ingredients and how these ingredients connect to each other in different time. And then uh, we knew each other for a long time up until now. We're lucky, as I said, that we last this long. Uh, 
But because of that, we took a lot of things for granted because we know each other well, uh, you know. So uh, it's different than doing something like force to be do to be doing something with others that we just knew before, for example, then it's very, very different. But to give that time, I think, uh, to know each other doesn't have to be always productive, uh, but actually be generous to each other, trying to know each other, understand what make each other stick and all those kind of stuff. It's a very important part of the of the process, which for Documenta 15 at least, we realized as well, although we were blessed to be working for Documenta 15 in three years, st some stuff, we didn't have time to do so, especially with COVID as well, you know. So, and different collectivities should be, that's why we, were, we are learning from different people and collectives in we're using this opportunity of Documenta 15 to learn from others because we realize there's no magic pill and there's no recipe how to do collective collective works everyone has different type of answers to do it even serum and us and pro Arupa are doing it differently because we we have different ingredients to begin with you know so like serum is much more understanding and experience in education, which a lot of us in Rorupa started by dropouts, you know. <laughs> so that can, good school could only happen with Seru. Rorupa alone couldn't be able to make it, uh, make good school, for example, and Gravis Ruhara as well, of course. But that kind of, but when we started to join, to understand each other's strengths, I think that's when, 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 things organically happen and then we cannot force it to happen a lot of times we cannot shortcut unfortunately at least if anyone knows how to do it i would love to learn how to shortcut it i haven't been able to find it thank you thank you okay i think now let's open up um maybe uh, any question from zoom Okay, let's open up to the floor first. Any question from Castle? Okay. Hello. Hello, thank you all so much for speaking about your experiences and uh, congratulations as well for um, the incredible work here at Documenta. Uh, I, I am part of an art collective that formed 10 years ago that is um, our members are quite dispersed, um, even though we're relatively small, like between six to nine members. I guess I'm curious because the the topic of sustainability, both from like a financial perspective, but also as far as um, energy, working through conflict, um, the you know interpersonal dynamics of working in a collective manner. I'm just wondering if um, you all could speak to that. Um, if you have any experience. Uh, thinking through or working through uh, being uh, very distant from from each other as a collective. Uh, I'm just curious about that. To fill up the gap, all right. Uh, that, that is why uh, I advocate small group, a small size. Because the bigger the group, the more the, there will be a lot more conflicts, and very difficult to manage the conflicts, and then things could not be done. But and uh, when I'm talking about the small group, uh, um, I do have the um, uh, something inside my mind. I I really need to get the right the the, the like mind people. They are very different, but they 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 share the the same objective with the same value. That's very important because that's the that's the common ground. Uh, when we have a lot of conflicts or we tend to sway uh, sway away then but because we believe there's something and we talk about it so in one of my slides actually uh, i think communication is uh, very we have to do a lot of communications 
If there's any misunderstanding, we talk about it. We, we, we clear any assumptions. So a lot, a lot of uh, communications must be done within the team. If at the end of the day, the communication cannot convince a particular member, then I think it would be the time to rethink what could be the composition because that particular guy will not be happy. And we are also not happy. So when there are two unhappy entities there, it's very difficult. So just like a, you know, a, a marriage, if it's not good, then divorce. <laughs> so, um, thank you, May. May your group is small, but go school. How many people, and how do you deal with that number of people? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, the yeah, um, the method is just, uh, yeah. Uh, Farid already said, or JJ already said, we have a majlis uh, in uh, one month, but. But I think majlis is like a formally uh, meeting, uh, uh, official meeting in the good school member. But how uh, to we manage the many people in the good school is important. I think it's a hang hangout space in the good school. Yeah, you can see this space is uh, this initiative from the people uh, our member in the good school uh, live in there because yeah uh, if you go to good school is yeah it's different like uh, artist run initiative in the house so we we can uh, go go inside with the semi profit uh, but in in the good school now i think it's little bit institutional building because uh, sometimes a member or people come to good school want to meeting or um, uh, teaching in the class but in the hangout space is uh, is like uh, we still uh, connecting and can the managing the the uh, people's and members in good school so the idea and the uh, program start with the hangout and the notes still continue and sustain to to yeah thank you i just asked jj there's 60 members in good school so six zero sixty and i guess what is common what uh, J, uh anka and farisa i think friends Making friends is really key for both of their practice. A hangout is a way to make friends and spending time with each other and find a common interest and uh, dissolve the conflicts with beer. <laughs> and that is really important for them as well. Okay, um, questions from Zoom? Yeah. Yeah, Oscar. Okay, may I ask my question? Yeah, because I have a question to May and to Hing. I know that um, the time was, uh, of course, limited that you had in uh, in Kassel, but I'm wondering if there is any inspiration or experience that you would like to bring back to Hong Kong and share here. Uh, you know, we, we have talked about uh, organizing a sharing session then uh, together. Uh, also yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really curious to know um, if you uh, uh, bring back any impulses or inspirations. Yes, uh, there's one, uh, Almuth, at least, because I've been here just for a few days, all right? But I did go to the ghost kitchen in the evening, so we should have karaoke, a place for karaoke, for table tennis, you know, for hangout, uh, just as uh, nothing particularly serious about art making. You know, through casual talks, uh, make friends. So then uh, it's one, one of the ways. Actually, uh, I, I, I did try to think about it. Uh, there are two things that uh, actually good school also uh, inspired me. Because uh, previously, I did want to turn Futalao into a school. But I didn't. I haven't, I haven't done it because I need a lot more resources. So, but, but, but actually it could be done in a different way. All right, so that's one thing. But another thing is, uh, actually, uh, I was thinking of um, uh, turning into one particular unit or what, and actually we think about it, but we haven't realized it. That's the problem. Uh, to turn it into a common place, you know, just like uh, the hangout place, people can come and then talk about anything, uh, relief, because in Hong Kong life is very pressurized. So we need to have a space 
to hair, you know, actually, hey, we call it hair in Hong Kong, hang out, which means, you know, you just don't do anything, you know, you just, no purpose, just, yeah. Yeah, hang out. Hin, any quick learning? No, because I just, uh, I haven't checked out the many parks. I mean, I, I, I mean, the part of the document, I just uh, visited Purple Song. I don't know, but uh, I think we need alcohol. I mean, to... <laughs> So one last question from Zoom. Uh, Oscar have two. Okay, uh, we will ask two questions at the same time, so speakers can listen and answer in one go. Okay, I'll just read the, the questions out loud. the The first one is: um, Today we talked about how artists make spaces to share resources among themselves as creatives, as artists. As a lay member of the, the public living in Hong Kong, I'm wondering how non-artists might be able to enter artistic spaces not just as members of the audience or receivers of art, but as co-creators, though not professional ones. So that's the, the first question. And the, the second question is about the digital space that you use. Um, and the question, Viv, goes, um, for all of you, it seems that the, the physical space makes the, the most impact as a collective resource, but does the digital realm also make a difference to, to how your spaces operate? Do you foresee it becoming more important after COVID? Mass yeah, there are two questions. I think you can pick either or you if you want to ask as a both. Um, yeah, Ferry, maybe you go first. Yeah, thank you very, very much for the question. One, maybe this, the, the, uh, what, the internet connection, uh, like not real life at least, or a digital. Uh, we're, we were forced to go that way. Good school is also can can share a lot of that we were forced to do so in the preparation of this as you know we would we were this type of practices like our practice uh rely a lot in in real life uh interaction uh like you know the ping pong table good kitchen you know like all the alcohol you know all those kind of stuff is kind of like the lubricant no for for things to happen at say that's why like even something like documenta or an exhibition can be understood as a reason a, a means to an end which is the end itself is like relationship between each other that can last last longer than the exhibition itself uh in that sense uh we had to go through a steep learning curve to do so, to make it everything about Zoom and all this kind of stuff. It's not perfect, but what you are seeing in um, as Documenta 15, let's say, in whatever reality it is, it, we have to be honest that it was made from a very particular uh, 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 circumstances. COVID is one big part of it. And then, uh, that's why I think it has been very, very important for a lot of us who are doing this uh, to celebrate together in Castle again. Then maybe it relates to the first question of like how people can enter. Uh, for me, the answer is kind of simple a lot of times. Uh, let's forget about what we're doing as art that comes from everyone, not only the audience, but also the artist. And I think a lot of people we are working with uh, in Documenta 15 has been doing it uh, to a certain extent. It's not perfect in any way, but it opens certain, at least for us in Royal Rupa, because it's unprecedented before, at least from our experience, that it's actually possible and that it's very, very hopeful that way. Thank you very much. Hopefully, I don't take too much time with the others. Thank you. Well, perhaps uh, I'll just uh, quote you an example. I I tried out and I, I think I failed in getting non-art people into the into Futala, right? Um, uh, several years ago, we, we, as I told you, we promote green living and we have a roof garden at the, at the top. And we, 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 we turn it into organic farm, and then we try to use the uh, the produce to make uh, 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 green food for for the for the people. 
And then uh, they actually it attracted a lot of uh, uh, um, people who, were, who, who didn't come to Fudalong. But uh, then, uh, interestingly, they just came for the food. And uh, they, they're not interested in the box, you know, in my, in my uh, bookstore, because the whole thing uh, be, it was held in the, in the bookstore. And uh, they were not interested in going to other uh, places to see what the other people are doing. So they just came for the food, because it's really quality food, you know, well designed and everything. So, uh, but I think there's, a, there's a, a, a thing that we should do, but we haven't really um, uh, 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 continued the, 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 the efforts. That is, for these people coming for the green food, then what can we do to keep them there and then to get them more interested in art and culture? And uh, we just stopped short there. And uh, before that, you know, they just came, uh, they were office ladies, office, uh, office people, First, we were happy, but then later on, we, when they were not really engaged, we, we felt, uh, you know, depressed. And uh, I think uh, um, I, I would need to go back and think about it. And uh, but 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 our space we're open to non non artist people to hold exhibitions. And I did encourage your know, people to hold uh, the, become a first time artist, just like Joseph Boyce said. Everyone is every human being is an artist, so you don't need to be an artist. You know, per se. So uh, that, that's what we're trying to do, but uh, not really very successful. Uh, for though, it's still, I think, very much uh, uh, artists or cultural people uh, oriented, yeah, in a way. Uh, for my case, uh, I don't know, because uh, it seems 1983, uh, we, do, we, we did some time open call for, 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 for strangers to join some screenings or, or, or events, but we, we mainly have gathering or screening within the art, uh, art group people. But I think it is kind of sometimes uh, during the, the project at Tycoon and, and Video Touch, actually we invite many strangers to come. There's sometimes you, you need to uh, have much effort to, to talk something really, how to say, it's, yeah, to their interest or they, they don't really understand what they're doing sometimes, but in need times, I know it need, it, need time, it need times. And also maybe it's, it's not only our job can do, I mean, the education, the, the, the vibe, the cult, cultural vibe in Hong Kong, and there's many things. There's one thing to add. Actually, uh, now in Hong Kong, community art is very popular. You know, the artists all go into different districts uh, to, to do all kinds of art and cultural things. And then it reaches a lot of uh, the public. And so for us, we can only support you know, all those artists' uh, activities and so that they can go out, do things with the public, yeah, indirectly. Yeah, it's good, good school is very open. Uh, yeah, like a uh, kitchen and uh, uh, someone and stranger can, will become uh, and hang out in, in the kitchen. Uh, yeah, it's not only from the someone uh, or artists from the art school uh, we are working together because we believe the artistic practice also uh, become the art. Uh, a local community or a citizen yeah uh, like for example uh, in the best five we also uh, um, uh, accept the uh, collective uh, sudut kalisat from the jember is they aren't it's not uh, have the uh, from the art school and yeah but uh, now they are can running domestic uh, stuff in the kitchen and it's very important i think it's not only uh, making the art, but how we um, uh, hosting and uh, you're talking with the, another uh, new friend and uh, strangers. But yeah, sometimes I feel like uh, we uh, too much generosity, <laughs> and yeah, how uh, yeah how to the manage the, we we the new friend in the future. Thank you everyone for this two hours very fruitful conversation. So I think uh, we need to come to an end uh, for this session. But 
First of all, thank you so much for all the speakers. And, and also thank you everyone who have been joining us here in Kassel. And more of you are joining us over Zoom in Hong Kong, in Jakarta, in YouTube, in Facebook, and Zoom over the world. So thank you so much. And I hope this conversation can, can be